Session 10 of the Book of Deuteronomy, and we continue to study the Dabar of Abba, Abbas Debarim, the words of Yahuwah. We ended and we're still busy with Deuteronomy 4 verse 30. And as we discussed in the previous session, this is the desire, this is the plan, this has been the ultimate goal of Yahuwah since the beginning, and it is his ultimate goal with which he sent Yahshua to this earth. And it will be his ultimate goal in the last days when he sends back, Yahshua back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords to come and rule and reign upon this earth and take his kingdom back. This is his goal. What is that? That you and I will come back to him. That the prodigal son will come back to him. That the whoring wife will repent teshuva of her ways and come back to her husband. That the lost sheep will come back to the shepherd. This has always been the desire of God, to have a family and a house. And um, Psalm 132, uh, just read Psalm 132, where David said, It is his desire, David's desire, to build a house for Yahuwah, so that Yahuwah can live with his people. And then in Revelation 21, we see that Jehovah will come down with a new Jerusalem out of heaven and he, he will come and live with his people and be our God and we will be his people. That is his desire. You want to pray? Let the will of God be done, Father. Let your will be done. What is the will of Father? <laughs> Yeshua teaches us, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, because that is the will of Father Yahuwah, that his kingdom will come in our hearts, that we will understand that we are part of the broken down Jerusalem that has become a, a, a shame in the eyes of God, how we've been taken away by the enemies and how we've been taken into exile and scattered all over the earth because of our disobedience. And we as the most beautiful bride, become a broken down, burnt down city. But how he wants to restore that city, restore the um, understanding of the city in our hearts until such time that he will physically restore the city as well. And in the meantime, we desire to bring back his people to his house, teshuva back to him, listen and obey to his voice. David says in Psalm 132, uh, 132 he can't sleep anymore. All he can think about is to build a house for Yahuwah so Yahuwah can live within the covenant of his people inside Jerusalem. And God himself says in Psalm 132, Jerusalem is my holy habitation. This is what I have chosen for myself. This is where I want to live forevermore. And you can't help but go to Revelation 21 and see that Yahuwah says himself, Now I will live with my people forevermore. We need to understand that we were Jerusalem. We were the most beautiful city. We were the covenant people of God. Every person out of every tribe, nation and tongue that has ever loved the God of Abraham. But because of disobedience, humanity that was supposed to be the the children of God, got scattered all over into paganism and lost ways. But in the last days, Deuteronomy 4.30, when you are in great tribulation and all these things have come upon you, even in the latter days, then you shall make teshuva to Yahuwah your Elohim and you shall be obedient to his voice. Let me take you to the beautiful prophecy of Isaiah, one of the biggest prophets of God. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 4. Arise, arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of Yahuwah has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and a great darkness will cover the people. That is us. Yahweh says in Deuteronomy 4, verse 26, You will perish from the land, and I will scatter you among the nations, and you will be thrown into darkness. Because the Torah is light. Yeshua is the light that came to this world, and the darkness could not overcome it. And as we sit in darkness, every one of us in our tribe, nation, and tongues, everyone in our 
and little corners where we fear this world. Every one of us that's still living in the darkness of Egypt and Babylon, there's so many that is still sitting in, in this great darkness that is covering the earth. Isaiah is prophesying, Behold, the darkness cover the earth, and a gross darkness covers the people. But Yahuwah shall arise, who has arisen from the death, who has arisen from the grave, who has arose out of darkness into light. Yeshua, the Mashiach, the Anointed One, He is the one that is the light upon the nations. Out of the nations we return back to the light, because we are sick and tired of the darkness. We are sick and tired of the fear and the deception and the the idolatry of the darkness. We are these people that Isaiah is prophesying about. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of Yahuwah has risen upon you. So when we see the light, when we see the glory of Yahuwah, as we understand we are sitting in darkness under the tree of knowledge and we start desiring to return to the God of light and to come out of darkness. For where we are in darkness, we shall indeed see the light. Because God prophesies and a prophecy is a promise that we can remind him when we pray. We can pray. <coughs> Sorry. We pray, Father Yahuwah, you prophesy through Isaiah that there is a gross darkness upon the earth. But Yahuwah shall arise upon us. And his glory shall be seen upon us. Father, we pray that in this gross darkness that is currently upon this earth and that has been upon this earth since we ate from the tree of knowledge and we disobeyed your voice. Um, we pray that this light of your son, Yeshua, that came to this earth to to buy us and redeem us out of the kingdom of darkness and translate us into the kingdom of your son, this son of David, we pray that you will shine him upon the people in this world that is still covered in darkness. Isaiah continues in um, Isaiah 60. And the Gentiles shall come to your light. Amen. Yeah, it is an absolute confirmation of what Moses says in Deuteronomy 4. Because he says, you'll be scattered into the Gentile nations. And out of the Gentile nations, you will return back to Yahweh your Elohim in the last days when you um, hear his voice and obey his commandments. And this is exactly what the prodigal son did. The prodigal son was eventually in the pigsty, covered in poop, in oink, oink, poopy poops. I've got another word for that. It's a kind of rubbish excrement that we are covered with when we're sitting in the pigsty in darkness because we didn't love the house of our father and we wanted to go out and live our own lives do what is right every one of us in our own eyes and we were covered in darkness and and pig poop but out of these gentile darkness nations the gentiles shall return to your light out of the Gentile nations, those who um, desire the light, those who search and seek, remember, Moses said, if from there, um, Deuteronomy 4.29, you shall seek Yahuwah your Elohim, you will find him. If you seek him with all your heart, if you sit in the darkness and you seek him, you shall find him. And Isaiah confirms the Gentiles shall come unto your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. What must we see? Come on, guys. Let us lift up our eyes also. Just like Moses lifted up his eyes and he saw what Yahuwah was teaching him through these words of these prophecies. He probably saw into the future. He saw how we will soon perish from the land. He saw how we will be scattered amongst the heathen. He saw how we will serve other gods. He saw how we will seek Yahuwah. And he saw how when we are in tribulation, we will return to him and be gathered by the hand of the Messiah. And here Isaiah is seeing exactly the same thing. Isaiah 60 verse 4. Lift up your eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together. All they come to thee. 
your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. This is another fulfillment of the prophecy of the plan of God. After scattering, they will be regathering. This is his plan and his goal and his instructions to Yeshua, the Mashiach. Because unto him, he is the light and unto him, the nations will come. And unto him, the peoples will be gathered. And the sons of daugh- and daughters of, of the lost sheep of the house of Israel will gather themselves together to the brightness of his rising. Beautiful how these um, prophets are all agreeing together and all working together towards the same plan. And so we can draw this golden line of consistent prophecy all through scriptures. I mean, just for one instance, Ezekiel 37, the valley of dry bones, the hand of Yahuwah was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of Yahuwah and set me down in the midst of the valley that was full of dead and dry bones. Dead and dry bones. We are in darkness. We are in the, in the scattered exile nations. We are not home yet. Many of us are still dead. We haven't been risen like the 12-year-old daughter of Yairus. We haven't been brought back into the 12 tribes. We haven't been grafted back into the olive tree of Romans 11 and Isaiah 11. We're both the Old Testament prophet and the New Testament apostles are agreeing that all must come back to the covenant of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jacob was changed to Israel. That is what we call ourselves. We are not black Israel where the black people are telling me, you white people can't be part of Israel. And we are not part of white Israel, where the white people are telling me, oh, all black people cannot be part of Israel. Out of every tribe, tribe, nation and tongue, the Gentiles will be um, regathered back to God when we come with repentance on our lips and with understanding of his Torah that is the light and that is the way of salvation and we repent of our breaking the Torah and we get forgiveness for our sins and we come back glorifying the King of Kings that has been the King since the beginning and prophesied since the beginning. In his hand will the nations be gathered back, will the lost sheep come back and will the dead and dry bones be brought back to life. Read the whole Ezekiel 37 of the valley of dry bones and how Yahuwah will lift us up out of the graves and bring us up out of the graves. Ezekiel 37 verse 13, you will know that I'm Yahuwah, your Elohim. When I open your graves, O my people, when I bring you out of your graves, therefore prophesy and say unto them, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. I'll cause you to come out of your uh, graves and I'll bring you back into the land of Israel. You shall, I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you back into Jerusalem. That is where Yahuwah is going to establish his kingdom. Then shall you know that I, Yahuwah, have spoken it and I will perform it, he says. Read the rest of Ezekiel 37. I'll be your God and you'll be my people. The two sticks that he brings together in the hand of the Messiah. That is the ultimate goal. That is what Yeshua has been busy with since the beginning. Explaining the scattering, the broke, the breaking up of the two houses of Jacob. Since that happened in the book of Genesis. And we can see how it happened after physically in the, in the land of Israel. Um, at the time of Rehoboam and Jeroboam. But how that is symbolic of us today we are these people that has totally um, been broken off the 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 wild branches we we've we've grown up totally in another tree but we learn that in the last days in tribulation we will remember the voice of god again and god himself can bring a wild olive branch and and graft it into the original olive tree the prodigal son can come out of the pig poop and come back into the house of his father. The dead and dry bones can come back to life. The nations can come back to the rising of the light of the glory of Yahuwah. And so the, the, the prophecies continues all over and over again. And everyone in the Bible agrees because this is the ultimate 
reason the Bible has been written is to teach us to teshuva, to turn back to God. When you're in tribulation in the last days, you shall make teshuva to Yahweh your Elohim and you shall be obedient to his voice. Because Yahuwah wants his people to live. He wants to call out over the valley of dry bones. Oh dry bones, live. And for us to live, for us as God's people not to perish, for the nation of Israel not to perish, one person had to die in our place. One person had to die to take the curse of death away from us. So that we can come out from under that curse. And even if we die in the flesh, we will be resurrected on the last day. And for that, even Caiaphas, the corrupt priest in the time of Yeshua, prophesied in John 11 verse 15. And he said, Don't consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, so that the whole nation does not perish. And thus spoke he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Yeshua should die for the nation. And not for the nation only. Listen to this. Underline it together with all the prophecies I've given you this far. Not for the nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Can you hear how nothing changed between coming back to the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and becoming Israel? Nothing changed when Yeshua died because this was the reason Yeshua died. To die for the nation. So that all, even all those who were scattered into all the nations can be gathered together as one can you see john 11 verse 52 gathered together as one the children of god that were scattered abroad ezekiel 37 yahuwah will um, gather the stick of ephraim and bring it together as one with the stick of judah can you see how the parable of the prodigal son that came home and were um, restored back into the family together with his older brother? Can you see how the Bible is consistent? There is no confusion about who Israel is and who we are supposed to be when we return back to our God with repentance and praise and understanding of his ways that is eternal since the beginning. And Yahweh continues through the mouth of Moses in Deuteronomy 4, verse 31. He says, For Yahuwah your Elohim is a God of mercy. He will not forsake you. He will neither destroy you. And listen to this now. Nor will he ever forget the covenant that he swore to Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. And we can rest assured. Even if sometimes we doubt, our God will never forget the covenant. He will indeed bring us back into the land that he promised to Abraham. We can see that happening in the book of Revelation. For those who don't take the mark of the beast, for those who are keeping the commandments and the testimony of Yeshua, they will be gathered back to Jerusalem. And the king, the, the son of David, will be king over them. And eventually, after the thousand years, Yahuwah himself will come down with the new Jerusalem. And we will live with him forevermore. This is the promise. This is the covenant God made to Abraham. God made the, the covenant to Abraham that we see in the book of Revelation. It's not about dusty old Jerusalem now. It's about the kingdom of God coming back to this earth and being established again as it was in the Garden of Eden. This time without the serpent and death and sin and disobedience because we would have learned our lesson. It's going to take him 6,000 years to teach humanity the lesson so that those of us who return to him with repentance and obey his voice out of the nations and we eventually have the opportunity to live with him again nobody will ever in the rest of eternity 
disobey his voice ever again. With free will, we will love him. He could have made puppets in the Garden of Eden, but he didn't. He gave them free choice. And free choice threw us into the darkness of sin and death. But now we learn out of darkness, sin and death, we come back to him and our free choice, with our free will, we choose him. And it's these kind of people that will live with him again forevermore in the holy city with peace and no more sin and no more tears and no more darkness and death because we as humanity, those of us that comes out of the darkness, would have learned that our free will is not good and we rather choose to obey his will because we've seen what our free will has done. This has always been the plan of God. And this is where he's going to establish his kingdom again. He's a God of mercy. He will never forget his covenant. Just listen to Jeremiah, another fantastic, great, amazing prophet of God. Jeremiah 30 verse 10. Uh, no, I'm going to start with verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, says Jehovah of hosts, that I will break his yoke off from his neck. Bring us out of Egypt. And will burst your bonds, your bonds of sin and disobedience and captivity. And strangers shall, shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve Yahuwah, their Elohim. And they shall serve David, their king. Listen to this. Whom I will raise up for them. Jeremiah lived in the time after David died already. But he's prophesying that we will come out of the land of bondage. He will gather us again, his servant Jacob, and we will serve Yahuwah and Yahshua, David, the son of David, Yahshua, whom God will raise up for us. He, he, he didn't raise up David from his grave. He raised up the son of David, Yahshua, from his grave. And he is David, our king. Jeremiah continues in verse 10. Therefore, do not fear. You and me today in 2021, do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says Yahuwah. Do not be dismayed, O my people Israel. For lo, <laughs> oh please take your pen. Come on, just take a red cokey. For lo, look, says Yahuwah. Do not fear, for look, I will save you from far off. And your seed I will save them from all the lands of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest in Shalom, in Yerushalayim. And David, uh, uh, sorry, Jacob shall be quiet and nobody shall make him afraid anymore. What does Moses say? When you are in tribulation, when you are afraid in the last days, look at the promise of God. I will bring you from out of every far nation and you will not be afraid anymore. For Jeremiah 30 verse 11, I'm with you, says Yahuwah, to save you. I will make a full end of all the other nations in which I have scattered you. But to you, I will never make a full end. Beautiful. Yahuwah says, I'm Yahuwah, your Elohim. I'm an owl full of rachamim, uh, mercy. And I will not forsake you, neither destroy you, neither will I forget the covenant I made with Abraham. This is the God that we worship. He will never leave us or forsake us or forget the covenant. We need to endure these days. We need to endure the fear of the last days in tribulation. He's not rescuing us out of tribulation. He is calling us while we are in tribulation in the last days. Do not lose hope or fear when these days come upon you. Another great, great prophet of Yahuwah is Daniel in the book of uh, Daniel chapter 9 verse 4. And I prayed unto Yahuwah my God. And this you can pray as well, my brother. This you can pray as well, my sister. Pray with Daniel and with me. I pray unto Yahuwah my God. I make confession and I say, O Yahuwah, the great and dreadful God, the great God who keeps the covenant and the mercy to them that love him, who keeps covenant and mercy to them 
that keep his commandments. Do you remember the commandment of God? What is it? Um, um, in, in, the, in the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20, I'm Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of Egypt. You, you must have no other Elohim before your face, although we are still in Egypt in bondage, and uh, uh, all of Christianity and all of the other religions still has other gods before their faces. But I'm Yahuwah, your Elohim. You shall not bow down yourselves to these other gods. Um, he says, because I will, I'm a jealous God and I will visit your iniquity upon you. But, is um, Exodus 20 verse 6. I will show mercy, mercy, rachamim, to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. In the Ten Commandments, he says that if you obey me, I will have rachamim on you. Why do we need rachamim? Why do we need mercy? When we disobeyed. And we repent and we return to him in the last days. He will have mercy on us. And he will show us his mercy for a thousand generations. To whom? To those people that repent of their law breaking. To those that um, follow his voice. To those that love him and keep his commandments. Yeshua says in John 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. And John, I um, can't remember now, first First book of John, verse three, uh, chapter 3, verse 2, I think. It says, if you say you love him and you don't keep his commandments, you lie. Because loving him is keeping his commandments. And that's what he says. Then I will be your God. Um, and, and you'll be my people again. And that is why we pray. And that's why we confess together with Daniel. I make confession, O Yahuwah. You are great, Yahuwah, because you keep covenant. The exact same covenant you have given to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. The exact same covenant you wrote down at Mount Sinai. You're keeping that covenant. You give mercy to them that love you. But loving you is not enough. You give mercy to them that love you and keep your commandments. And then you keep covenant with those people. And what is the covenant you're going to keep with those people? You're going to bring them out of every tribe, nation, and tongue. Like you promised Abraham, you will, you will gather his scattered sheep again. And you will bring them into the land that you promised to Abraham. This is the covenant that we can be assured of and not lose faith in. Because we are the people that have circumcised hearts in these last days. We return back to him with circumcised ears, wanting to listen to him. Listen to Ezekiel. You know that I love this prophet. Ezekiel 11 verse 16. Therefore say, thus says Yahuwah, although I have cast them far off among the nations, and although I have scattered them far among the countries, yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary. In the countries where they are. So, and he himself will gather us. He says in verse 17. I, even I, will gather you from the people. I will assemble you out of the countries where I have scattered you. And, listen to him, keeping his covenant, promising, and the same promise to, to Abraham. I will bring you out of the countries where I have scattered you and... I will give you the land of Israel. And he continues, verse 19, I'll give them one heart, the house of Judah, the house of Israel, the two sticks in the hand of the Messiah. I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them. Can you see how God is telling us exactly what he's busy with? Even though we are going through tough times in these last days, as Deuteronomy 4 says, when you're in tribulation in the last days, if you listen to my voice and you obey my commandments, I will bring you back out of the scattering. So let's continue with, with, with uh, verse 32, Deuteronomy 4. For ask now about the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that Jehovah created man upon the earth, so what is Moses telling us? He's telling us that we must consider everything that has happened since Genesis 1. Ask about the days that are past. Ask from one side of the heaven to the other. And ask yourself, since the days of Adam, 
and we discussed Noah, and we looked at Abraham, and we looked at all these people of the whole book of Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus and Numbers, and now we're busy with Deuteronomy. Think about everything you've learned this far over the last two years. And ask yourself, has there ever been a Torah as great as this? Or has anything like this ever been heard of? Have you ever heard about a Torah like this? Since the creation of man, this God that gave his commandments which we broke, and this God that is working through every page of the Bible, explaining to us how to return back to him. Has there ever been, ever been a word like this? No, there hasn't. Because this word eventually became flesh, this Torah became flesh and was nailed to the execution stake, to do exactly what God is telling us here to do, to remind us how it was in paradise, in the Garden of Eden, because that is where we will return to when the Garden of Eden becomes flourishing again in the land of Israel and the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven. And Revelation 22 verse 14 says that we who shema will have access to the tree of life again. This is the, the main goal of doing Bible studies, of going through these things over and over again. And yes, maybe you think I'm, I'm hammering on this too much, but I've been telling you for two years that Deuteronomy 4 is, is the crux and the explanation and the, um, the mission statement of God, this God of creation since Genesis. For ask from one part of heaven, from one part of earth all the way to the other part, has there ever been a Torah like this? Verse 33, did any other people ever hear the voice of God that rose out of the fire as you have heard it? And you're still living? You're still alive? Of course, he's, trying to, uh, he's speaking here to Israel. They actually heard his voice and they are still alive. They didn't die. But yet they said, no, Moses, you go and hear the voice. We are too scared. But you and me, brother and sister, in these last days, in the latter days, we are no longer scared. We are desiring with all our heart and all our being to hear the voice of God. We are not going to be like the first Exodus generation who's going to run away and hide in our tents and tell Moses to, to go and listen to God. No, we Every one of us are listening. We are shamahing every single day. We are searching the scriptures. This amazing Torah that has never been heard before. We are searching it because we desire to hear his voice. And we want to be part of his plan. Servants in his garden. Laborers in his field. Like Psalm 132 says, David is desiring to build his tabernacle for him. We are desiring to work together to bring the lost sheep of the house of Israel, to bring them the gospel of the truth in, the, in these last days so they can also return to the house of God.